Okay, three months in. Now weighing in on April 1st, I'm coming in at a 10,000 step a day challenge and I did pretty good. Weeks when I meal prep, I do so much better eating on plan because I don't have to recount my points for every single meal. And I can just easily retrack it when I save it as a meal in the WW plan. Yep. Casual. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Lauren. Today is April 1st, which means it is my three month weigh in update. This morning I did weigh in and I also recorded taking my measurements because we're always looking for some of those non-scale victories in addition to seeing how numbers move on the scale. So today I am gonna share with you guys my three month weigh in as well as my measurements and side by side picture comparisons to how I'm doing since I rebooted my postpartum weight loss journey on January 1st of 2023. It's been slow but steady going and we're still making progress which that's what we want to see. Starting off in March, I did try to get myself back into trying to walk 10,000 steps a day. I refreshed a 10,000 step a day challenge and I did pretty good up until like the 16th of March. To be honest, I got overwhelmed by a lot of stuff. Josh was gone a lot of the month. It was a very rainy month here in Georgia, so it was hard to get outside and walk with the kids. I tried my best at doing some at-home walking stuff, using YouTube videos and other inside workouts, but it was just really, really hard for me to get to that 10K steps a day last month, and I felt like I needed to take my own advice from last month and bring it down a notch, and so I changed my goal mid-month from 10,000 steps a day to 7,500 steps a day, and now starting in April, I'm gonna restart trying to get that 10K steps a day now that I've had a couple weeks getting in a groove, finding some routines, and being able to now like take those steps up a notch for the next month. Sometimes we start off with huge big goals and realize, you know, for our current life circumstance, it might be a little bit unattainable. Take it back a notch, still keep at doing something. I still got around 7,500 steps in a day, which is more than I was getting previously. So that was still a step in the right direction. No pun intended. So we're doing good at getting some more movement in. I will say the other reason I took it back a notch other than just it being busy and hard to fit in those steps during the day when I was home alone with the kids and we had really crummy weather all month is I noticed about halfway through the month, the more I was focused on getting my 10K steps a day challenge in, the less accurately I was counting my points on WW. And to be honest, you could do zero exercise and still lose weight as long as you're on top of your food. Your food makes up like 90% of being able to lose weight. Eating the right foods, eating the right amount of foods, spreading it out throughout the day instead of what I slip into on busy times, which is like not eating all day long, sipping on coffee and grabbing things here and there that are hard to track, and then just eating a ton at the end of the day and at night. So adding that big new challenge was a good push for me and it did get me to start thinking more about movement every single day, but it kind of was taking away from my main priority, which is weight loss and tracking myself on WW. So mid month, I did decide to take a step back from that challenge and get refocused on WW and then decide to slowly add in more and more movement. So because I am refocused on both movement and staying accurate on my WW tracking, I'm also doing a quick meal prep for the week ahead. Weeks when I meal prep, I do so much better eating on plan because I don't have to recount my points for every single meal. I've already counted points for this particular dish and I can just easily retrack it when I save it as a meal in the WW plan. So here is a quick look at my weigh-in and measurements I took this morning and then I'll bring you back and catch you guys up on what I'm starting to meal prep around the kitchen for next week. So it's a new month, we're starting fresh. We're still gonna take a look at how we did last month and think about how we can move forward this month in our goals. We're just gonna keep on trucking Team Tortoise. I started the month of March weighing in at 315 pounds. And like I said, I noticed by mid-March with my attention falling away from tracking my food on WW, I had actually gained a pound and a half and was at 316.5 by mid-month. Now weighing in on April 1st, I'm coming in at 314.9 pounds. Not really a loss, but also not a gain for this past month. I got back on track after adjusting my focus back to my food over walking 10K steps a day. Okay, three months in. I'm officially down five pounds since the beginning of my rebooted weight loss journey, and I have begun to see some changes in my measurements. I've lost half an inch in my bust, an inch at my full waist, an inch and a half at my hips, and a quarter of an inch in my biceps. 
I am up half an inch in my right thigh, so who knows, maybe that walking is helping me build some more muscle. I haven't seen any difference yet in my clothing, but I'm looking forward to more progress over the next month. So keeping on track of staying on top of my WW points and my eating plan to start off this month, today I am getting a meal prep done for the week, something quick and easy. The first recipe I'm throwing together is a crock pot Rotel chicken and rice dish. This couldn't be easier. I throw two chicken breasts at the bottom of a crock pot, add two cups of chicken broth, one can of Rotel undrained, and I'm throwing in about a cup of canned corn. This is just leftover from one of our other meals from the week. I'm gonna turn it on low and let this cook for about five hours until the chicken is fully cooked through. And while that cooks, I'm getting started on dish number two, which is going to be a pasta salad. So I'm cooking up one pound of pasta, any style noodle that you want would work, and drain it well. So while the pasta cools, I'm gonna get the rest of my pasta salad ingredients together. Today we're gonna be doing a chicken bacon ranch pasta salad. So I have about half a package of thinly sliced bacon here. We had used some of this earlier in the week for doing some breakfast for dinner. So I'm gonna use the rest of it up. I'm gonna go ahead and chop it so it's in smaller pieces, fry it up till it's nice and crispy. And then I'm also gonna use up the rest of these nature sweet tomatoes, little cherry tomatoes. I have about half a carton there. I packed a package of some fresh spinach. I'm gonna shred up nice and thin to put into the pasta salad, as well as about half a red onion diced nice and small. I'm gonna pop a couple chicken breasts on the grill in a little bit. They're still finishing off defrosting. And then we're gonna make a little low point ranch dressing to be the dressing for the pasta salad. Before I'm too invested, I should probably ask you, ask you all my questions, get to know you better. All right, so I have all of my mix-ins other than the grilled chicken. Chicken is still thawing, so I'll probably have to come back later this evening to add that last ingredient. But I have my drained pasta. I went ahead and let this cool in the fridge for a little bit because otherwise it'll wilt our spinach and I still want a little bit of crunchy texture from that. So we're just gonna toss all of this in. My bacon has been nice and drained. It's nice and crispy. Now, if you want to remain having this bacon super crispy in the pasta salad, I would store it separately and then just add a measured out portion to your pasta salad for each meal you eat it during. Because otherwise, as we add all this into the pasta along with the dressing later and the chicken, it may lose a little of its crunch. But that's up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and just for the ease of it, toss it all in so it's easy grab and go for the week. Before I'm too invested, I should probably ask you
right, so it's been a couple hours. My chicken breast is now fully defrosted. I'm gonna go ahead and season it with some Himalayan pink salt, as well as some of this Kinder's wood-fired garlic seasoning blend. This is one of my favorites right now, especially to use on chicken that's going on the grill. Most of the Kinder seasonings are no sugar added, so they come out to zero points on the WW plan. And don't forget to do both sides. Once all seasoned, I'm popping these chicken breasts on a preheated grill. Mine end up taking usually about seven to eight minutes a side, but it depends on the size of your chicken breast. Just make sure your internal temperature is at 165 before you pull them off the grill. And then I like to let them rest and cool before cutting. So while those cool down, I'm gonna go ahead and check on my Rotel chicken crock pot dish. It's been about five hours. As you can see, the chicken breasts are fully cooked. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add in a box of my Spanish yellow rice, as well as the seasoning packet. So now that I've added in the rice, the lid is going back on and we're gonna continue cooking for one more hour. At the end of that hour, all of our rice is nice and cooked. I like to fluff it up with a fork and look at how tender this chicken is. It falls right apart as I'm fluffing the rice. I like to give it a good shred. And then I just let it cool down and I'm gonna store just like this. It comes in at only four points per serving on the WW plan. So you can add any extra toppings that you want. I like adding some shredded cheddar cheese, some plain non-fat Greek yogurt instead of sour cream, and a sprinkle of chili lime seasoning. My grilled chicken cooled down and I went ahead and cubed it up into bite-sized pieces. I add this into the rest of our chilled pasta salad. And then for the dressing, I'm just making a zero point ranch dressing, one cup of plain non-fat Greek yogurt mixed with a tablespoon of ranch seasoning mix. And then you can add either lemon or lime juice or water to get the right consistency. So that way when you pour it into your pasta salad, it coats everything evenly. This is definitely one of the meal preps. Like sometimes I get sick of eating like the same thing for lunch every week. This has so many different flavors going on in it. I don't think I'll have a problem eating it most of the week. I a lot of times have that zero point ranch dressing just ready to go in my fridge so I can add a little bit extra freshly when I'm going to eat it so it's not all absorbed by the noodles, but also cooling your pasta down before adding the dressing like we did will help it not absorb as much of the dressing either. Lighten this up with an alternative choice of pasta or by using turkey bacon instead of regular bacon. This recipe is super flexible, works for you. Add in any other veggies you want because for the most part, the only points are coming from the noodles and from the bacon. Chicken breast, zero points. All those veggies, zero points are dressing made of the plain non-fat Greek yogurt and ranch seasoning, zero points. Hey guys, so I ended up having some of the pasta salad for dinner tonight. I put everything into the WW plan. I created recipes for both the pasta salad and the crock pot Rotel chicken and rice dish. So the chicken bacon ranch pasta salad comes in at 11 points if you get eight servings out of it, which I think I will, and they're pretty generous sized servings. Again, you can easily knock a couple of those points off if you swap out your bacon for turkey bacon. I get 45 points a day, so for me, I haven't swapped out a ton of stuff to lower points yet because I'm still trying to like actually get my points in every day. But that's definitely an option. Customize it to work for you. The crock pot Rotel chicken and rice dish, if it's divided into six servings, will come out to about four points per meal, which is great. So if I have one of those for lunch and one for dinner, that's only 15 points out of my day so far. But we're not done yet. I have some lunch and dinner options I can mix up throughout the week. And I'm sure obviously with the kids and Josh around um, midweek this week, I will cook dinner some nights. So Josh will eat some of the preps too for lunch and bring them to work. But the last meal of the day I haven't hit on yet is breakfast. And breakfast is sometimes a struggle for me. I love breakfast. I'm a total breakfast person, but sometimes with our busy morning schedules, I just like get so wrapped up at getting Lila off to school or figuring out Nora's like going to be nap schedule for the day because to be honest, her naps have been all over the place this last month. It's been a lot on my hands figuring out her sleep schedule every morning. And then by the time I get them situated and settled and I sip on some coffee, it's already like 10 or 11 o'clock. And then sometimes I just skip on over to lunch. But not this week, I'm going to get my day started with a solid breakfast and some water before I get into my coffee because otherwise I'm the kind of person who would sip on coffee all day and then not eat until later. I don't feel good when I do that. I don't eat well later in the day when I do that. So we are gonna get a breakfast prep to get ourselves going first thing in the morning. For my breakfast prep, I'm going to be trying out a blueberry cheesecake overnight oats. These are gonna be super simple just to grab one jar of prepped overnight oats out of the fridge in the morning. I like mine cold, but you can also pop these in the microwave to warm up and I'm gonna be making 
four of them. I'm using some old fashioned oats. I have some of the Jell-O sugar-free cheesecake flavored pudding mix, some plain non-fat Greek yogurt. I'm using regular 2% milk because that's what I have on hand today. Using almond milk would swap the points a little bit lower for you. And then I also have some frozen blueberries. You could easily swap out the frozen blueberries for either chopped up fresh strawberries or some frozen strawberries and do a strawberry cheesecake or cherries as the summer months come, some fresh cherries in this as a cherry cheesecake would be super delicious. It's okay if they're not mixed up perfectly and the blueberries don't get all the way to the bottom. You just want to make sure that the liquid is all the way to the bottom um, surrounding the oats so that way they get nice and soft by the morning. Can't wait to try these. Okay guys, these look so good already. They're gonna sit in the fridge overnight and in the morning I'm gonna have a delicious breakfast ready to go that I can just pull out of the fridge and eat and get my day started off on the right track. That's where we're at for this month. Our biggest goal is just getting back on track making sure I'm charting my points every day, getting back into walking every day, trying to hit those 10K steps a day, and slowly but surely meeting those goals. So anyway, thanks you guys so much for watching today's video. Please hit that like button if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet, and until next time, bye.